everybody, Patty Ann here. Hey, welcome back. I'm going to teach you newbies who might have gotten a new machine for Christmas how easy it is to make an SVG. I'm going to show you how to make the SVG for your new portrait, your new cameo, or even if you got a new Cricut, I'll show you how to use the Silhouette software to easily make an SVG, any SVG you want. But we'll start out simply and we'll grow over the next couple of weeks. So join me to my computer and let's get started. Okay, one of the first things you're going to want to do is find an image to use. I'm just going to go to Google today to get an easy one. Another fabulous place to get images is a place called Creative Fabrica. And I have several other sites for you that I'll list down below or places that you can either get images for free or pretty inexpensively. So be sure to check underneath this video when you're done. And by the way, don't forget to subscribe so you'll know when I come up with some new videos to show you more in depth how to make your own SVGs. So anyway, look at my screen up here and you can see I've typed in Minnie Mouse New Year. I thought I was gonna find something for the New Year, but I didn't. So the first thing I did do though was I came over here and I clicked on images because I want images to show up here. So just click on images. Once you do that, and this is really, really important if you're going to make a print then cut, not as important if you're doing making an SVG, but you might as well get in the habit of doing this. What you do is this, come over to tools and click on that. And then over here, what it will normally come up saying automatically is any size, you don't want any size you want large okay the bigger the image the more pixels there are in it and the clearer it's going to be especially for print and cut so choose something large so i just went down here and i found this little mini here and i thought she would be perfect for us to use right now for this so i'm going to right click on her and say save image as and I'm going to save her as Minnie Mouse Face, Shy Minnie Mouse Face. They've already got it named as a PNG. So I'll say save. And now I'm going to open it in Silhouette. So let's go to Silhouette. Now I'll do this in the free version of Silhouette Studio. You can get the free word version and just practice. And you can use it if you have a cameo or a portrait. Okay, but if you have a Cricut machine and you're going to learn how to do this for your Cricut, instead of trying something like Inkscape, this, this I found was a lot easier and it's on sale right now for $48, a one-time fee and you own it forever. But anyway, if you decide to use this for your silhouette, you will have to do the business edition, but you can practice and see what you think of it in the free version. So since I have the business edition, I can come up here to help and view in, and I'm going to view it in the standard or the free edition, just so you can work along with me if you're trying it out to see if you like it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to File and Merge, and I'm just going to get that shy mini head and say OK. And she comes in just like this. I'm going to make her larger. As you can see, there's a white box behind her, and I don't want that if I'm making this into an SVG that I can cut out of cardstock or vinyl. So. I'm going to go ahead and trace this. Now to trace something, you just come way over here to the tools on the right hand side. And this one right here that looks like a piece of toast, or some people think it looks like a butterfly. I'm going to click on that, which opens up the trace panel. Each one of these things that opens over here is known as a panel. So I'm going to open the trace panel. Once I have it open, I'm going to say select the trace area. That's going to give me this little four-headed thing <laughs> that I can just draw a box around Minnie. Now let's say I didn't get the box and I missed part of her. That's not a problem. See this little box right here where I'm circling? You can just click on that and pull it out so you get all of Minnie in there. And now. What the object of today is, is to make sure that you have nice lines all around Mini. Now, this is involves this tool right here called the Threshold Tool. If I make that go way up, you'll see that I no longer see all these parts in her. And what would cut are all these little holes and so on. So what this is showing is what's going to cut. So I think I wanted to cut 
like this. Let's go ahead and say trace. Now, I'm going to move this part out because I don't really need it. And now that I've gotten this really nice trace of her, I'm going to click on the outermost part. And this is something I like to do. I don't think most people do, but I do this. I come up here to the upper left-hand corner where there's this color palette area. Click on that to open it. And then I click on a very, very light color that I'm probably not going to use in many. And oftentimes I use this really pale kind of greeny color like that. And the reason why I do that is because the next step is going to put little boxes around all of the things in Mini that I can color. And if I were to make that black, I wouldn't be able to see it very well. So I'd like to make it a light color like this. So I'm going to come up here now to Object and release the Compound Path. Okay. It's really, really not necessary that you know why you're doing that right now. Just know that when you're making an SVG, the first thing you'll do is you'll trace it. Then you'll click on the outside and make the outside most color a very light color. And then you'll go to Object, Release Compound Path. Now, when I release the Compound Path, that's going to put little boxes around all the parts of Mini. So I'm going to click on it. And look at that, all those little boxes show things that I can color now. So I can click off and then click on things that I want to color. So maybe I want to make her skin tone, so I'll click here. And if I want to make sure I get the exact same skin tone that's showing up here, I can come up here to that same color palette I used before, click on it, and notice there's this little eyedropper that shows up. I can click on this eyedropper and then come down here and click in the area of the face tone that I want. And there it is, just like that. Let's get her bow. I can click on this piece, come up in the color palette area again, get the eyedropper, and click. And that made it the color. Now I can go around one by one doing that, but for today, I'll show you. You can click on this middle section, hold down your Shift key on your keyboard, and click on the other part of her bow. So now you have two parts of her bow selected, and you can come up here to the color palette. Now, this time I won't need to use the eyedropper because the very last color that I used is right here. So I can click on that. Now, when I did do my trace of this, I traced it in such a way that the little dots didn't show up. That's a little bit more advanced. We'll do that another time, but for right now, we'll leave it like this. So now what I can do, since I have a lot of this colored, well, actually, maybe I'll do her the whites of her eyes first. So I'll click on the white here, hold down my Shift key, click on the other white, and come up here to the color swatch area, change it to white. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the outermost edge, and I know I got the outermost edge because it's a box all the way around it, and I can tell because the outermost color is this kind of light color, remember, that I chose in the beginning? Well, now that I've chosen that again, I'm going to make it black now. And look at that. Look how she's doing just like that. However, her eyes are still a little goofy, <laughs> as is her nose. So let's scroll in and see what you have to do here. We're going to learn to use a new tool all already. I'm going to click on this eyeball. And I'm going to hold down my Shift key click on the color that's right behind the eyeball, right behind it, right beside it, behind it. Then I'm going to come over here to the Modify panel. It's a rectangle with a little circle with it. And if you hover over it, it says Modify panel. Once that panel opens up, I'm going to say Subtract. Check that out. Look at that. Now, what happened? Let me show you what happened. Now, we're not going to have to cut out little pieces of black for her eyelashes. And this part, check this out. What's happened is those pieces were subtracted or cut right out of her flesh tone. So that's perfect. Now, what do you think we're going to do with the nose? By the way, right now I'm just using my arrow key to nudge that up a little bit at a time. Put it back into place. With her nose, we're going to do the exact same thing. Click on her nose. Hold down your Shift key, click on the color that's right behind it, and then come over here to the Modify panel. Notice it's still open because I didn't open another panel. But the Modify panel, and then I'm going to say Subtract. And right now, look, 
right now this is a piece that's on top of here but I'm going to subtract that out of this piece so let me hit the undo button and put those back so again I'm going to click on her nose shift her face come over to the modify panel and say subtract and that's it that's all you have to do for your SVG for mini. So let me show you, if you're using a silhouette machine, all you have to do is go send, and I will, let's see, do it by fill. I don't have my machine um, turned on right now, so it's not going to look perfect. Um, let's go to simple first. I'm gonna say cut edge, and then I'm gonna go to fill. So what I can do now is this. I can uncheck all of these, okay? Once those are unchecked, I can take one at a time. Now, if I want these to stay exactly where, there's two ways I can do this. I can either put these here however I think they'll work the best, okay? Uh, meaning I won't use up all of my vinyl or all of my cardstock. Or what I could do is this. Let's go back to design and hit the control Z or the undo button. Let's undo all this till it gets set back to where it's supposed to be. What I could do before I send it is this. I could come up here to this little select by color. And by the way, this is something that you'll definitely want to do if you're going to use this for Cricut. Make sure you do this part. So you're gonna to go to select by color and then over here when the select by color palette opens, say select by fill. I'm going to click on the pink. Notice all the pink got selected. I'm going to come up here to object, make it a compound path. And what that's going to do is going to keep it all together in one piece. I'm going to click on the white, come up here to object, make it a compound path. I'll come to this color and I think it already is a compound path. It's only one piece, but yep. See, I can't even make it a compound path because it's just one thing and the same with the black. So now check this out when we say send and we can go to simple again and I say cut edge and if I want to do it by fill uh, I could do my black first. I can move these out of the way if I want to and usually I do just to keep myself from getting confused. I can do the black and I can change it to cardstock heavy. I could change it to vinyl if this part's going to be vinyl Go way down here and check and make it vinyl, vinyl, matte, okay? Maybe I'm gonna do these different things. After that's done, after I send that, I would hit send right down here. I can't do it right now because my machine is turned off. But after that is done, I would move this over here. Maybe put the pink one up next. These are the ones I still have yet to do on this side. Okay, so maybe with the pink one now, I'm going to make that be uh, vinyl glitter. Let's see if there's a glitter vinyl. Vinyl, whoops, I don't want that. I want vinyl glitter. Yep, there it is. Vinyl glitter. So it's going to cut that out of glitter and it's going to change the settings just how I need them. When those are done, I can, well, what I would have had to do though is click on this and uncheck this one. I'm done cutting out that one, uncheck it. I want to cut this one out next. Uncheck this one. I can do her face, her skin tone, check it. I could make it also vinyl. And once that is cut, uncheck it, move it off the mat, and then do the eyes, which are around here somewhere, there they are. And I could also do the eyes, here they are. Check it because that's what's next, nothing else. And click that to be vinyl as well. Okay, so that's all there is to it for this. Now, if you're going to save this for Cricut Design Space on the other hand, because I feel that this is so much easier than using something like Inkscape or using something like uh, Adobe, because those programs, you have to pay every month for those, almost like you rent them. Whereas this program, the Silhouette program, you buy it once for $48 and you own it forever. You could put it on three different machines. You can use it for different machines that you might have. For example, if I go to send, 
Um, I have a lot of different machines available to me. I have a Cameo 4, a Cameo 3, uh, a portrait. And notice there's this one has that little icon right here. That means it's the Wi-Fi version. This means it would be plugged in via the USB port. Okay, anyway, so I would go like this. I'd double click, I'd just click on this and group it. Then I'd either get rid of this one or select this, say File, Save Selection, save it to my hard drive. Now, if I have only the free version, this is why you can only practice this, okay, for your Cricut. You won't be able to save it as an SVG if you only have the free version. However, if you purchase the $48 version, the one-time fee, you own it forever and ever, and I swear to you, in a couple months, you will pay that much for some of those other programs just to rent them. Anyway, you'll be able to put offsets on things. I have so many classes and so many videos of things you can do for your Cricut machine using this software. So let me show you. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go to Help, and I'm going to change this back to View In, and I'm going to go back to the Business Edition. That's the $48 edition. Now I have this one selected. I'm going to go to File, Save Selection, save it to my hard drive, and now check this out. I'm going to change it to Mini Head, and I'll change it, put it in my downloads, but this is what I want you to see. All of these options you can change now. You can save it as a SVG, a PNG, a JPEG, a PDF. I'm going to save it as an SVG and say OK. And now we're going to go over to Cricut Design Space. Whoops. And now we're going to go over to Cricut Design Space, do a new project, make it larger. I'm going to upload, upload an image, browse, uh, ba -ba -ba, mini head. Notice it's an SVG. And it's shaped like that because I have the silhouette software. But notice under type, when I hover over it, it says SVG. So I'm going to click on that and say open. There she is. She comes in beautifully. Say save. There she is. Insert her and check it out. This is a beautiful SVG that you can cut with your Cricut machine. There's the white, all these four layers, the white, the pink, the flesh, and the black. Now, if you end up with a whole slew of layers over here, it's probably because you forgot that one step that I told you over there to go to that one paint palette and um, convert those to, um, well, let me show you. Hold on. Let's just go to make it first. As you can see, each one of these is put on their own page, and you have a beautiful SVG that you created yourself, just like that. No more buying them. $48 the one-time fee. I'll have the link for you down below where you can purchase the, um, the $48 version. First get the free one and try it out and then use my link, please, to get the paid version. So let's continue back to Silhouette and I wanted to remind you of what I did. So to get these so they're not a lot of pieces, when you come over to Cricut, remember to come up here to this paint palette. Select by color, come over here. It's gonna come probably in by line. You wanna change it by fill and then just click on these one at a time. Once you select it, come up here to Object, make a compound path. Okay, that's all there is to it. So if you have a zillion pieces over there, a zillion layers, remember, you forgot this one step. Come back to this video and check it out. The first easy peasy video on how to make SVGs for your cameo, your portrait. You can even make them for your scan and cut and especially for your Cricut machines. Whether you have the Cricut Explorer Air, Air 2, even the Maker. So I hope this makes sense to you and I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll try the free version and then you'll be chomping at the bit to get the other version so you can see all of the things that you can do with this software. So thanks for joining me. Please ring that little bell and subscribe. Give me some comments if you're confused and uh, come on over and join our Facebook groups. So again, thanks for joining me. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to have linked down right after this video, seven free classes on creating SVGs. So make sure you click on those and watch them too. So thanks again. Bye y'all. Okay. Just as a little outtake, I had done, I cut mini out 
and I didn't have the right color for her skin tone, so I just made it out of this yellowy color. However, I also cut it out of white because I'm thinking I might use my paints, my watercolors, and give her a f more of a flesh tone wash. We'll see what I decide. But in the meantime, whoops, wrong glue bottle. This is the one I wanted in the meantime. And I didn't put the lid on this, so again, I'll have to get my little pin out. To, I should have left the pin in here to open this up so that my glue will work. And let me just glue it together for you right quick. This piece. Well, yeah, like I said, let me glue it together for you. Whoa, bombed away. Right quick. Uh. Okay, let me try it again. Let's see which way does this go. Like that. All right, a little bit of glue. And again, this is just a sample for me to show you, so I'm not really too concerned about the color of her skin because this was just a tutorial for you guys. I love teaching you new people how to make SVGs, how to save money, tons of money, and don't be bashing your head against the wall trying to use Inkscape. You'll enjoy this software so much more because it's made for cutting machines. Listen, I used to use Inkscape and I've used Adobe products for years. But for the majority of people, this is the best software to use unless you're a graphic designer or you really, really, really want to get into it. But for the most of us, this is the perfect software ever. So again, thanks for joining me. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. See y'all again soon. Bye.